Have you ever thought about going on an RV trip, but maybe just didn't know where to start in the planning process? Stay tuned and we're going to share with you what we do to plan our trips to be able to have a great time while we're enjoying life on the road. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you are new or this is the first video you're watching, my name is Charity and my husband Ben and I have been RVing with our family for over two years. In this video today, we are going to talk about some of the resources and the tools we use to plan our RV trips. Now, I am a planner by nature. It's just kind of part of my DNA in personality assessments or in temperament assessments, I am one of those people that is high on the scale when it comes to planning. So planning is something that I definitely always do when we are getting ready to look at going on different trips with our family. So having a plan can really help you out just to make sure that you do have a spot to stay for the night and that you don't end up having to boondock out of necessity. However, planning is also good for safety reasons. And if you'd like to learn more about safety for RVers, you can check out the video above where we actually give you some great safety tips and planning ahead being one of those tips. So one of the things that we always want to make sure in our planning process is we do not want to drive more than six or seven hours a day. Even though we do switch off driving, I drive and sometimes my husband Ben drives, we still like to keep those stretches on travel days less than seven hours. It just is not fun for our two children being cooped up in the RV for more than seven, eight hours, very maximum at a time. So part of our planning process is we plan where we want to go and then we plan where we need to make stops along the way to make sure that we're not driving for more than that six or seven hours a day. Another thing that we learned very early on is to not go at a grueling pace. Our very first trip out, we were just so excited. We wanted to go so many places and see so many things. And what we ended up doing was really biting off more than we could chew. We were planning just two or three nights in one destination before we move on to the next. And we found out it got very tiring having to pack everything up every couple of days to move to the next spot. So now when we do our planning, we're much better about giving ourselves a minimum of four nights in one destination. And really what our preferable stay is, is closer to seven nights. So part of our planning process is knowing how long it's going to take us to get from point A to point B. We want to make sure that we're keeping under that ideal driving time that we want to spend behind the wheel on the travel days. The other thing that we now do as part of the planning process is looking at the different areas that we want to be and what are some of the attractions or must see things in that particular area. We've learned the hard way at times that you want to be able to plan ahead for things that are in certain areas that may be something that's very popular. Perfect example of this is when we were in Key West, Florida earlier this year. We did not know that we needed to plan very far in advance to be able to get tickets to the ferry that goes over to the Dry Tortuga National Park. We arrived in Key West and we had eight days there. However, the tickets were already booked up and they were booked up up to two weeks in advance. We were told during other times of the year they can actually book up months in advance. So now when we plan our trips, we try to look at things three to four months out sometimes six months out to be able to not only book campsites at popular campgrounds and destinations, but also at different things that are in the area that might be something that's extremely popular to do. You want to make sure that you look at those types of things to make reservations well in advance so that you can take advantage of doing things while you're in that area. So we use several different resources when it comes to planning our trips. I've used the Good Sam Planner in the past, and unfortunately they've discontinued it. The tool that I'm currently using is rvparky.com. What I like about RV Parky is it will also help you calculate your fuel costs based on the total mileage of your trip. It also helps you understand what the drive time is from one destination to the next. This is especially helpful if you don't want to overextend yourself on travel days and to be able to know if you need to just break your trip in half and maybe plan on boondocking one night until that you get to your ultimate destination or knowing how long it is from one destination to the next. The other thing that I really like about RV Parky is that it shows you different campgrounds that are in the area. 
this can be helpful because instead of relying on tools like Google, you can look at what other RVers are saying about different campgrounds. Is RV Parky has its own review system on the different campgrounds that it will show you that are within a specific area. Once that you've created your trip, you can even take the link for your trip and share that with family and friends. We've done that this year and it's a great way to be able to let people know where we're going to be and when we're going to be there. We have several family members this year that are going to join us along our trip route. So RV Parky and sharing the link is a great way to let them know where we're going to be and they can let us know if they would like to join us during any of those stays that we're going to be in a specific area. So for someone that's maybe not so structured, you might ask, do I really need to plan? And is planning really necessary? Well, let's just say this. We've never not had a place to stay because we have planned in advance. Now that's not to say that we're always super structured and that every single stop is always planned. There are some times where we leave ourselves a few days of flexibility, or maybe we don't make reservations between one destination or another, just to give ourselves some flexibility and choice of maybe where we might want to stay. A great example of this was last year when we were traveling from Key West up the Florida coast. The original plan was to maybe stay in Melbourne for a few nights before that we moved more north towards the Daytona Beach area. However, we decided to just keep going north. And instead of staying in Melbourne, we found an absolute gem of a campground in the Flagler area of Florida. This particular campground did have a site open and we were able to stay there for five nights on a campground that was right on the beach. And when I say right on the beach, we were so close that in our bedroom of the RV at night, we could hear the waves crashing on the shore as we would fall asleep. It was a wonderful spot, and we probably would have not stayed there had we not had a little bit of flexibility built into our schedule. So it's not saying that you have to plan everything out in every minute and every stop has to be planned but doing a little bit of advanced planning can help ensure that you do have a place to stay, especially during peak seasons for different areas. So I would love to hear about what you do for trip planning. Leave us a comment below and let us know what apps or websites you use when you plan your trips, or do you plan your trips or just go where the wind blows you. We would love to hear your comments and thank you so much for watching this video.